then I went home the second time, and I'm about to get into the shower, and I was talking to Gwen on the phone, she says, well, the cat's in the shower. <laughs> but, you know, here's this skittish cat, but you start to love on that thing, it starts to purr, right? We all need a little love, right? <laughs> God shows his love towards us. You know, I see people struggle with, I don't know if God loves me. Yeah? I don't know. I, I don't know if he loves me or not. Well, based on, if you want to base it on what you do and, and the kind of person you are, yeah, you're not very lovable. I know a lot of you, and you're just, you're not, you're not that lovable. <laughs> but when, but God loves us because he wills to. You know? We, we know why we love God. But I don't understand, you know, you have a hard, I have a hard time understanding that because when I came to the Lord, um, and got saved. I gave my life to Jesus. Yeah, I wasn't the same ever since. You know, it was such a dramatic change in my life. I became a new creature. And, you know, I didn't have the testimony. I got saved when I was two and a half. You know, I mean, I was raised in the church. I heard the scriptures. I went to Sunday school. But there came that day that it was... Me and the Lord. And I, I knew that I was wrong. And I knew I was a sinner. And I said, Lord, I need your salvation. And he saved me. And, and I was changed from that moment. And that was six months before I was supposed to get married. And my wife, uh, which is my fiance, she, just, she didn't know what happened to me. It, it was a dramatic thing. You know, Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still changing lives. He's still doing that. I am. And you know, one time Jesus said, I am. Before Abraham was, he was speaking to the Jews, I am. Right? That doesn't sound like good grammar. But it's the good word of God. That word I am, the self-existent one. Remember Moses said, Look, who am I going to tell the children of Israel that sent me? God said, you tell them that I am. Now that's present, isn't it? He, it's, he didn't say, tell them the I was sent you. Or the I is. The I am. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. It's not, you know, we know that uh, there's a future... We're going to have a future resurrection of these bodies. But Jesus says, today I am. Today I'm the resurrection of life today. And he is still changing lives. If, if you will allow him to. Right? We can, we can do this to, to the Holy Spirit. You know, we can let him in so far that we kind of close the door. You know, that, that popular verse you hear about when witnessing to people, you know, you say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens, I'll come in and sup with him. Right? I'll sup, fellowship, all these things. You know, Jesus spoke that to the church. Right? In Revelation, he was speaking that to the church. I, I stand at the door and knock. And so, the only, the, when you encounter Jesus Christ, the only answer is, you're the Lord. I mean, that is the only, uh, if, if you've examined his life, that's all you can say is that he's the Lord. And so we let him into our life. And you know, when I got saved, I thought that I was seeking him. But you know what? He was seeking me. And I remember reading, I, re I remember, I wasn't, born again very long and I was reading in the book in the gospel of John and Jesus spoke John chapter 6 and he says no man can come uh, to me unless the fa father draws him right and so I thought you know this is personal it's something personal God is doing in my life I'm not just a, a, a grain of sand in the ocean you know on the beach it's personal He's drawing me. He was drawing me to Himself. At that very moment, God was seeking me. 
I wasn't seeking Him. I was just responding to what He was doing already in my life. And so when we yield ourselves to Him, when we really yield our members unto Him, then He will, he, His will can be expressed through us. And we'll be a functioning part of the body. You know, uh, being part of the body means that you're useful. That you're necessary. I was talking to my coworker, and I think I mentioned this to you about, you, you know, I asked him, I said, how much would you give for your one, one eyeball? You know, for, would, you, would you sell your one eyeball for, uh, you know, $100,000? No way. How about a million? How about uh, 20 million? No, I wouldn't do it. And then finally, you know, most people would say, never. No, there's no, it's no price. Don't ask me anymore. But I got the 50 million and he said, well, maybe. <laughs> so, but you see the value that we put on a part of the body, right? And, and how much precious, more precious is the soul? What would a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, what profits a man if he gains the whole world? But he loses his soul. So, uh, yielding your life to Him. And you might think, well, that's easy to do. Well, have you ever done it? It's not as easy as you think. Because we got something else in us. We got a will. And it wants to do what we want to do. Right? And when we yield our will to His will, then God uses us. You know, we, we come together a lot, don't we? We meet together a lot. And, you know, you could, you could kind of say, well, we hear, we hear a lot of the same stuff. Well, we need to hear the same stuff. We need to be put in remembrance of these things. You know, we come together to be encouraged, to be built up, to be helped, that you might go out and into the mission field, wherever that mission field is, whether it's at work, at home, wherever it is, and carry the good news.